show performer, John a winner, both of the Air Show Industries Performer of the Year Awards. We want to out there and roll up. City barbecue taxi and as the North American B25 rolls out ladies and gentlemen one more time a little bit lower for you the three P51 Mustangs the 
fires at 80 miles an hour. He pops up. He rolls that airplane out at about 100 feet, levels off down, accelerates down our show line. There's about 120, there's 130 as he approaches show center. He's got that power push forward. All 985 cubic inches, spinning that big 108 inch long Hamlet standard propeller. At 120 miles an hour at show center, it comes up. The wings go round. Ladies and gentlemen, out of Harvard, Illinois, Dave Dacey and the big super stairman. Now as we watch Dave extend air show right, he'll be setting up for the next portion of his air show demonstration. Diving into the air show aerobatic area off that right side. He does the maneuver that airplane did so many thousands of times during its second career. That is that big crop duster style turnaround. Now as Dave puts that nose down, lets it start to bite at that great southern Wisconsin air here today. Power push forward. You can hear the roar of that big propeller as he comes right back at us here from air show right. In 2007, Dave Dace here shows what is honored to be pleased the recipients of the Bill Barber Award for Showmanship, which was presented at Ash Guys Air Venture. Now as we watch, bring that airplane straight up into the vertical in that absolutely gorgeous blue sky. Brings that stairman right on up and around, arcs right on through in the classic loop. Now as he lets that nose come around here on air show left. A lot of energy right there, 155 miles an hour. Dave goes in the left end zone. As we watch him extend air show left, he pops that stairman straight back up into the vertical, straight up, straight up, straight up, right about there. He flies that airplane right across the top, tilts his head back in that open cockpit, executes a half roll as he brings that airplane right back at us here, positioning himself right down at air show center. Now as Dave extends, there's about 160 miles an hour, 170 miles an hour as he flies that airplane right on up, carves that sky and eight slices with the giant eight-sided loop. The giant stop sign in the sky as he comes right down around that Ladies and gentlemen, Dave Dacey. As you watch Dave fly, remember, he'll be doing many of these same maneuvers, except wing walker stuntman Tony Kazian will be on the outside of this airplane. Let's watch right now as he executes a beautiful hammerhead turn, diving straight back down again. Airspeed starts to build. This airplane started life, built in 1942 by the Sturman Division of the Boeing Airplane Company in Wichita, Kansas. So brand spanking new to the United States Army Air Corps. It went to work for the next through the World War II time frame, teaching young young people how to fly. It was the primary trainer in In 1946, the airplane was then sold surplus and went to work down in the Delta as an aerial applicator. That's right, a crop duster. Dave acquired the airplane with all the crop dusting tank up where the front seat used to be. The the bottom of the wings. That was a real spray rig when he bought it in 1977. He spent the next year modifying the airplane into the air show special we see here today. And so now, in its 59th year of thrilling air show fans and people that working for a living, ladies and gentlemen out here, Dave Dacey in the big Stearman biplane. Again, an airplane that's been working hard since 1942. Now as we watch it bring that Stearman right down the show line here, showing a nice crisp roll rate of the Stearman. Big difference we see here between the stock Stearman, as we saw John fly earlier, and the super Stearman, of course, is on the business end. When Dave pushes that throttle forward, he's working with about 500 total horsepower. John Moore has got 220 on the nose of his. That's the completely original engine. Dave, of course, has also added ailerons to the upper wing, which greatly enhanced the roll rate of that big Stearman. As we watch him bring that Stearman right back down onto the deck, there's 130, 140 miles an hour. Now the nose comes up, the wings go round as he carves that sky right on through. Look at that as he does the four-point hesitation roll. Every 90 degrees, he stops the roll and completes the four-point roll. This airplane, of course, Dave has done a very nice job of color coordinating that paint job. When you see the sunburst design like you see right now, you're looking at the top side of the airplane. As he comes across the top, you, you'll notice uh, the checkerboards are on the bottom side, so very nicely done. As you listen to the noise from that airplane, about 90% of that noise is actually from the propeller as it comes down the show line. Is that prop being spun, the 108 inch long disc being spun at 2300 revolutions per minute? That gives you a, uh, about four inches of each prop tip blade that are actually going supersonic. Now, as you watch Dave go into that right end zone, look at that thing, so go straight up, straight up, coast into the vertical, straight up out there off air show right, right about there, just before he's all out of up, he steps on that left rudder. Hammer head turn, dives straight back down, makes his wind correction while diving out here at air show center. Brings that airplane right back down onto our hard deck here as we watch him extend. Air show left to right to left here. He brings that airplane right on down the line here. Executes the eight point hesitation roll. Right down the show line, the eight point roll.
Now as he coasts into that left end zone, what a day to be out here in Waukesha. I'll tell you what, uh, Dave, of course, dedicates his performance to that barnstorming era when aviation was new, flying was young, and of course those young aviators had gotten their first taste of flying in World War I and uh, had learned to fly in airplanes with names like Jenny and Standard and uh, had flown in World War I. And when they came back, of course, there wasn't a United Airlines or an American Airlines to go to work for. So they uh, had to make their own living if they wanted to continue flying. They bought those surplus trainers and uh, went into the, uh, the bar what they called, what ended up being called the barnstorming business. They brought aviation to the heartland. They come to towns like Waukesha and Lake Geneva, Beloit, and they would uh, show them these new fangled flying machines, the kind of thing that most people had never even seen at that point, other than in a newsreel or in a newspaper clip. And uh, they would take a, make a range of the local farmer to uh, use a nice hay field close to town as their uh, makeshift airport, because of course beautiful airports uh, like this just didn't exist. So they uh, would use that uh, hay field as their airport and uh, have a make arrangements hopefully with one of the farm kids to uh, be their gas service there where they'd run in town with the gas cans and uh, take care of that service with them and hopefully in trade for an airplane ride. Well, they would do that, and uh, when you ever had that great people in that town had that combination of daring and cash and uh, took those flights, well, they'd uh, he'd prosper pretty good in a lot of these communities when you get a beautiful weekend like this where the business was good, and uh, it was a great time to be doing it. Then there were days where it rained for about a week solid, and uh, maybe the county fair had been in town the week before, so money was a little tight, and uh, those uh, young aviators didn't do so well, so they'd have to make arrangements with that farmer to... Uh, maybe tie up alongside the uh, the barn uh, with their airplane and uh, be able to sleep in the hayloft, hence the term barnstorming. A romantic era of aviation, when aviation was brought to the heartland of the, of the country, and uh, I'll tell you what, what a time that had to be as we watch Dave come down the show line, just demonstrating to you the very crisp handling characteristics of this big ton and a half biplane known as the Stearman. Yeah, these airplanes were built brand spanking new in Wichita, Kansas by the Boeing Airplane Company, Stearman Division, and uh, what a great airplane they turned out to be. Uh, they built about 10,000 of these machines, of which at least about 1,600 still exist, so that's a testament of something that was built in the 1940s, early 1940s, used as a military trainer, and still remains in that kind of numbers. So you watch Dave come right down the show line, do the nice, 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 now as Dave extends in there, show left again. What a day to be here in Waukesha. You're going to get a chance to see some of the very best of the air show performers. We watch Dave down there. He's got the smoke just billowing off there in between the runways. And he'll be setting up for his arrival sequence here in just a moment. Big crap with you as Dave sets up on your off air show left. There's about 150 miles an hour, so he brings her right back down onto the hard deck. In parade review, right down the show line, ladies and gentlemen, Dave Dacey and the Super Stearman. Showing you a nice four point roll as he goes right on through out there off of air show right. Again, what a day to be here at the airport. We've got the best of the best draw here, and we're looking forward to it's going to be just a fantastic time out here. Again, uh, just a few minutes away from a little Air Show 101 from Dr. Bill Blank in the uh, Super Decathlon. As Dave does a crop duster style turn on out there off Air Show right, teardrop turn around, coming back at us here from that right side. Coming right back at us here from the right end zone there. Coming right down on our FA mandated Air Show control line here. Brings that Stearman right down in parade review. Ladies and gentlemen, from your right, let's give a great big walk of show welcome to Dave Dacey. Great job, Dave. As Dave sets up for his arrival sequence, uh, while he's getting in position over here off the rear show left to land on our runway 10. Tell you a little bit about Dr. Bill Blank. Uh, D Bill is a senior AME and retired ophthalmologist. He began flying aerobatics 34 years ago when he took 10 hours of aerobatic course from air show pilot Pete Myers and has been teaching aerobatics for the past 29 years. He began flying air shows in 1987 and obtained a level one surface waiver in 1989. He has flown backwards. He will step on that left rudder pedal, execute a hammerhead turn, dive straight back down, and come right back at us here from air show right. Bill's not going to show us the aileron roll, which he tells us is the easiest of the rolls. He brings the nose up to 30 degrees above the rise, and then basically just switch to the stick over to the side, and executes the classic aileron roll. Well, now we've seen the loop, we've seen the roll.
against the clouds if you're in the right position. Eight jumpers, nine. Oh. And we've got nine good canopies. Skydivers, wings over walk shot. Now our jumpers are going to be watching conditions on the ground, looking for any wind changes. They'll be lining up their approaches. And they have a lot of control over where they can land with these modern square parachutes. The old military round parachutes were designed just to get you on the ground in one piece, but you didn't have much say over where that happened. These folks can fly their canopies like a glider. Landing first is Mike Stark, Raven. He's our drop zone daddy. Right on target, dead center. Raven, setting the standard for everybody to follow. Let's see how many of them can get close. And Mark skims the center. For you folks standing back a ways, we have an orange tarp out there and a depression in the runway for them to sight in on. Third jumper on target. All right, we're doing well today. Coming in next with the orange stripes yes. is our assistant demo coordinator, Seth. Yeah, buddy. Seth is one of our newer jumpers, but he's already making a big splash. And right by the target as well. Excellent. Got four more jumpers on their way down. You can see that they're staggering their descent so that no more than one is attempting to land at a time. And this is done through management of the size of their canopies and their natural descent rate and also by their control input. The same toggles that let these guys steer around can also put on the brakes and slow their descent. Okay, seventh jumper on the ground. There's two more. Okay, our last two jumpers turning into the wind here. Let's see if we get a stand up landing out of both of them. Whoa! Oh! <laughs> Misjudged the wind there. And he's okay. Alright, Mike. <laughs> Thanks for the wave. <laughs> Alright, all our jumpers are on the ground. Thank you very much for having us, Wings Over Walkshaw. And for any of you folks who thought that looked like a good time, Make sure and look us up at skydivemilwaukee.com. As long as you're over 18, under 200.
City's airport. I'm attending the Wings Over Wisconsin. Wings Over Wisconsin. Wings Over Washington. Right? Goes from today till tomorrow. This is a local air show event here held at the Sites Field in Warsaw. Today is uh, Saturday, August 27th, 2011. Check out this U.S. airplane right here. This is the U.S. Air Force. This is a really big airplane here. That's a big airplane. Got a couple airplanes taking off. More taking off. There. I like that one, the blue one. Here comes a yellow airplane. goes off to anyone serving in the military. I like this one right here. When I was little, I had a little toy look just like this.
I hope everyone who's watching this video enjoys it. Ooh. So I got pizza around here. This line here looks like it's for pizza <laughs> or for beer. <laughs> Army. Like I said before, my hat is off to those in the US, US military. Those who served are serving, unfortunately served and did not come home. My, heart, my hat's off to those guys. <laughs> 